morning. My name is Fiona and I'm an educator with the Sandia Mountain Natural History Center. And I'm here walking around today in Albuquerque on this beautiful morning looking for wildlife sightings to post on iNaturalist. Listen, do you hear what I hear? Can you spot the bird? I see it. And I'm gonna get a photo. I just scared up some birds by accident. The trick is trying to keep enough distance to not frighten them, but get in close enough to be able to see them and hopefully take a photo. Power lines, fences, and the tops of trees are good places to see the birds better when they're perched. Do you spot that one right in front of us? Actually two. One on this tree and one up on the power line. It can be really hard also to get photos of bees and butterflies. There are a bunch right now flying around this tree getting nectar from all the blossoms and pollinating it in the process. But to get a close-up takes a lot of patience. While I'm watching for the insects going to this tree, I also made sure to get some nice photos of the blossoms and the leaves. And there's even dried up fruit on it from last year. When you are documenting a, a plant like this, try to make sure you get really nice photos. Getting close to a leaf, tap your camera screen to make it clearer, and get photos of the leaves, the flowers, even the stems, and any fruits that you see or other features that might help people identify it. The more detail you can get, the better. So take some time, really look around you, look high, Look right in front of you at small bushes and flowers or bees and butterflies and things like that. And don't forget to look down as well. Get low down at the grasses and the soil and the rocks and see what's happening down in this world. Any bugs? any footprints or scat. That's animal poop in case you didn't know. I got this spider I just found swinging around from its web. Looks like it's bungee jumping. Hopefully you're recognizing how much you can find right around your house, right in your neighborhood, right in your yard. We've gone around our house and our neighborhood. We've taken photos of observations that we are making and it is time to upload them to iNaturalist. So go and open the app on your phone or on the website iNaturalist.org. Sign into your account or make an account if you don't have one yet. Click on the top right button where it says Upload and choose a photo of the first observation you want to input. I'm putting in this nice flowering tree. When I click Species Name, it's going to automatically suggest to me what it might be. 
and this is a pretty cool feature they've gotten pretty good at on this website. So it gives me a subfamily. It also gives me suggestions of what specific fruit tree it might be. I'm not really sure which one it is. You could go through and compare to photos of those and try to figure it out, or you can just select this subfamily. Sometimes it's really good at figuring out what your observation is. Other times it has no idea. So you will have to determine whether you go with its suggestions or not. Uh, if you don't know at all what it is, still post it and other people will help identify it for you. Make sure your date and time and location are correct or put those in if it didn't automatically enter them for you. And add any description if you'd like. If you know that this is something cultivated like in someone's garden or that they planted in their yard, then you can hit the captive cultivated checkbox there. Add any tags you'd like to make it easier for people to search for, like I might put in fruit tree or just trees. Separate those tags by commas and hit add. If you want to add this to any iNaturalist projects that you've joined, here would be your opportunity to do that. I don't think I'm in any that are specific to plants, so I'll leave that alone. When the City Nature Challenge is happening in a couple weeks from April 24th to 27th, uh, it, your observations will automatically be added to it as long as they're within Bernalillo County, if you're doing the Albuquerque Challenge or if you're somewhere else uh, within the boundaries of whatever challenge you're doing, it will automatically get uploaded during those dates. When you are all done, go over to the top right section of the page and hit submit one observation. It will save it for you. And then I'm going to do one more thing that I suggest is to add any additional pictures you have. So I'm going into edit and I'm selecting a photo of the dried fruit from last year from the same plant. Make sure you only put pictures of the same observation in one observation posting. And then a picture of the close up of the leaves. I'll open both of those two files and then I'll save it. And that way it'll make it easier for other people to help tell me what uh, species that is because I have so many good close-up photos. I always recommend doing that if you can. It'll save, it'll be on the site now, and you'll start getting information back if people comment or send messages in this top right, it'll show a number, and you'll know if people have added any information to your observation or tried to identify it for you. So find some cool stuff, enter it on iNaturalist, have lots of fun, and remember to practice proper social distancing and follow all of the regulations in place right now with the COVID-19 pandemic.